If you're building agents with dynamic memory, you don't want to miss this video. I'm really excited to bring on a special guest, Sam Whitmore, the CEO of New Computer and the creator of Dot, to talk about how she builds AI memory into her agents. The challenge is to build a system that understands both the specific and abstract topics of the conversation that you have. We use tools like extraction, summarization, time filtering, and semantic search to make this all possible. We talk a little bit about the internal tools that she built. We built a lot of internal tooling for this. I feel like our team is always joking about like, okay, if our consumer product fails, we have like 10 DVD staff coming to start. How do they think about performance? We do a lot of stuff with parallelization. So anything that we can run at the same time in our process, we run asynchronous in parallel. And how she thinks about optimizing different model usages and their trade-offs. We definitely all the different models, all the terrain. And I think for us, regardless of the case. For Without further ado, let's just bring on Samantha from New Computer. What are we actually building? Just a brief overview. The concept of DOT is something we've been working on since, honestly, August 2022. So really long time at this point in the age of LLN has been like the most personalized AI. And for us, we feel like focusing on personalization and an AI that gets to know you will really unlock a lot of capabilities in terms of personalized execution of tasks, like feeling understood, kind of like talking things on a daily basis, brainstorming, accountability. So we have a product live in the app store now called Dot, which you could try out. And it's mostly focused right now on accountability, brainstorming, conversational journaling and thought partnership. But we're continuing to work on kind of some of the task execution aspects, that's the direction we're going with it. Really, the, the way I kind of got all started with this was thinking about like, how we actually build personalization with LLM. This was like, again, two years ago or so. So early on in the RAG world and specifically in the concept of how does an LLM remember you or like have memory about who you are. And as you guys obviously are super familiar, this is one form of RAG in the sense, I call it more dynamic than a lot of other types of RAG because the user is interacting with the system all the time. And this memory is being written in real time in some ways. You're capturing the history of interactions with the systems of the user. You almost want to arrive at this sense that the system is forming an understanding of who the user is in addition to remembering specific things the user says. So this is what we try to do with DOT. At the base level, as you can imagine, like you could have an approach to this where you're like, okay, here's conversation history. It's a conversational agent. Let's embed chat history, chunk it randomly, pop it in a vector store and like, you don't know, just do semantic search across it. What we found really early on in our exploration was that retrieval for this was really difficult using like the most basic approaches. So if you look at some of the kind of queries that we're trying to support for something like how many times have I been to the gym this month? What do I have going on this week? Or like, what are my core values? Like, do you think I would like this thing? These all require like really different levels of knowledge and recall specifically about a person. So to map these, these create the different types of retrieval that's kind of going on under the hood for something like, how many times have I been to the gym this month? You are doing this like list query and that big strategy that's like, I'm going to take the top five results that are semantically most similar to this sentence, maybe is not going to give you a ever get result that's like, okay, I can count he's mentioned the gym 30 times, right? What do I have going on this week? It's kind of like, a temporal filtering problem. Like maybe the user, if you do semantic search or keyword search, has mentioned this week I want to do X, but they may not have mentioned this week at all. They may have just talked about a bunch of things over the course of a specific time frame. You actually may want to like filter by time. And then questions like what are my core values? Or like, would I like this thing? Are like things that are more abstract, like general holistic knowledge about a person that's been inferred almost more so than like a specific point of data that might be retrieved about them. Anyway, so this is probably not news you guys could share that you have similar challenges in the applications building too, but this is kind of how we started to think about approaching and like breaking down some of these things that we encounter in DOT. And then the other constraint that we're dealing with is that all of this is being done really quickly in real time. Users have very low patience for high latency in conversational applications. So some of the approaches I'll, I'll mention that we took today are because we're trying to really optimize for low latency. If you have an application, which is a ground worker or more asynchronous in nature, you might be able to take a different approach and have higher latency and like have more real-time searching and kind of like agentic reasoning about the data that you're surfacing. 
as opposed to having to have something that works super quickly in a real-time content. And there's also obviously a trade-off for quality, quality and cost in that like it's more expensive to do it for the highest level. And then because you have to use better models, potentially do more data rewriting or filtering. And then if you want to do this super cheaply, you might have to take a more simple approach. These are all trade-offs we think about all the time. And the approaches that I'm talking about are based on the, the trade-offs that we found correct for our application. Mainly, I would say the main thing we do that is like somewhat different than other people is that we do a lot of pre-computation of data and like rewriting of data, which again, if you're looking back at this angle, is like going to help with really low latency results. It's going to be more expensive. So um, it gives you better quality, but you have to do a lot of rewriting of data. This is like, again, something we chose because of the trade-offs that our application is supporting. So one thing we, we worked with really early on was kind of trying to extract from kind of deep projection polarization across like different entities that would show up in conversation. So if I mentioned the co-founder, Ethan, as a post-processing step in conversation, it might before when it's responding, it might retrieve this memory in the retrieval process. And then as a post-processing step, any new information I give in talking to it, it might append or like mutate the actual bio or notes field. So we give kind of this loop where it's like you, before you respond, you're fetching information with retrieval. After you respond, you're writing new information into this memory schema. And again, we try to use like the cheapest possible models for this that work well. It's still more expensive than potentially just taking like an embedding or chunking based approach. Hey, are your RAG applications falling short despite using the latest frameworks and models? You're not alone. I'm Jason Liu, and I've helped a dozen companies improve their AI applications. I've developed a systematic approach that delivers results. If you want to check it out, join my free six week email course and learn the techniques I use in my own consulting practice. That way, you can stop guessing at what works and measure what matters. Just check out improvingrag.com. This retrieval process in the conversation itself comes with like necessitates this dynamic router structure that we work with where it uses a combination of kind of like filters across those different fields with just keyword-based or semantic-based search. And again, this is something where it's like an LLM is kind of generating like potential filters that it's going to use keyword semantic, there's a ton of different like open space for how it might perform this. And there's a ton of ways that it could be correlate. And so the thing that I'm going to talk about today specifically is like how we looked at this gap, which is optimizing the performance of the router and use synthetic data and kind of like measurement to make it better. So the main thing that we did, because we basically were doing this pre-launch and every user is really different. And we're also doing this on a specifically like user by user basis, which is another one of our challenges, is generate a ton of synthetic users. So we had maybe like, you know, like 300 to 500 or so. And we would simulate interaction. So first we'd start off with like make fake bio for them. And then we'd have them kind of like onboard to dot and had like a system that would drive the conversations and have like fake conversations with the system for a specified period of time. So we build up like a bunch of conversation history where they say random things, emit events, et cetera. And then we came up with this panel of queries. So questions about like, as I just said, like the different types of behavior we want the memory system to have, like temporal questions. So like what I do last week, what I do last month, questions about like who the user is and point in time questions. So like specific data questions, like what's the name of my dog, things like that, or like making sure that like the things that are supposed to be retrieved from memory in those cases are retrieved. We then stored the actual like results for inferences of those, of like the, both the retrieval step and the final step in length met. And then the difficult and tedious step there that we did actually hand label the, what information should have been retrieved per user. So we tried making LLMs to be like, was this right? But in the case of us, like we basically at that point had like 50 to 100 like memory objects per person. And so it was like the LLM itself we were using to do retrieval was not going to be like better. Like we wanted to have the most gold standard data to actually be like, what's the actual answer here? So we built a little interface for ourselves to have the memories per user like 
clubs. We could like filter them really quickly and have like keyword filtering on it. And we just did like a bunch of manual beta rebring. Okay, like these memories, the IDs of these memories are like the correct ones that should have been retrieved for this query. Again, that took us like in the scale of things, it took us like a couple of days, which then like having that data set was very valuable going forward. So tedious, but useful. And then we had, we had length methods kind of our testing ground for actually running our different experiments. You can see here, basically the names of the different experiments. What you're kind of seeing here is different re-rankers we were trying. Basically like the, the retrieval step is kind of like step one router, step two, like using a re-ranker. Cohere is quite good at, at re-ranking. And how do you say that thing? Really, really, and we use it now. We then would look at kind of like the recall precision F1 for each of these experiments. And for us, like we're always, I would say we're most interested in like F1 was important to us in the sense that like we want ideally perfect recall and then like not too many extra. So like erring slightly on the side of like preferencing recall, but obviously if you preference recall all the way, you're just like returning all memories. But so we we're very interested in kind of trapping specifically F1 in this case to kind of get that balanced, like, okay, how, do, how are we balancing between precision and recall? Here's kind of like another screenshot that shows you like the reference output. Again, these are like ID numbers of like pieces of, me of memory that should have been retrieved a like earlier experiment and then a newer experiment and kind of being able to see like, okay, the F1 score, this is F1 score here was much better for the, for, for the specific answer. So this is kind of like comparing two experiments and like where they failed and where they were better than one another. Again, so this was like something we did a lot with this synthetic data while we we're pre-launch. Now that we're kind of like out there live, we kind of have to think about how to keep this going. This topic does not end. So it's like a mixture now of kind of like continuing to use our synthetic data resources. And basically when a user reports a bug, we will try to replicate this with our synthetic user generated a data set around that the behavior and do the same thing. We also have, I've really enjoyed using Dawn Analytics, which is kind of a good tool for people um, to surface like specific regressions or behavior issues or learn about like how users are using your app. If you are working with like a bunch of text-based data. And we use them as well to surface like latent issues. They kind of like look at data in aggregate and then again, try to replicate. And it, I would say again, this is somewhat of a feature of like our constraint in that we treat user privacy very seriously. So we're not kind of like going in and like really actively monitoring the log like message by message. It's your constraints are different and you feel, and you have like not, and you have access to that. Probably like the best way to set up a data flywheel is kind of to be used doing this with real data rather than synthetic users. But that's kind of what we're working on. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, check out improvingrag.com. We're going to talk about the foundations and not frameworks. Over six emails, you're going to learn how to overcome absence blindness, as well as how to fine tune language models, understanding diverse query types, improving multimodal rag, and ultimately smart question routing and we'll build a UX that collects user feedback. Just check out improvingrag.com and fill out this quick email address at the bottom.